Hey, hey, what's going on, you guys? This is your girl, Queen C18 Red, which is the D-Ross Queen CV, and we are back with a, another one. Those who don't remember the story about um, Junior, Justice for Junior, he was a 15-year-old boy that was brutally murdered by a vicious gang back in 2018. They had the wrong suspect. Um, he was, his friend allegedly, I'm going to say allegedly, his friend allegedly called him and um, asked him for $5 or whatever. Got him out the house and lured him to a spot to meet him where he was um, spotted out by some gang members. Okay, what actually led up to this senseless killing of a junior was the gang member, one of the gang member um, sister, she was a um, I'm trying to be respectful. <laughs> but fuck that. Should I be respectful? Because they killed this boy for no reason. But why should I have to be respectful? Should I be respectful or not? But she's still a kid. Oh, fuck it. Sh sh damn. Anyways. So. Shit. How should I do this? Because I want to be respectful to all parties. But they was not respectful for this kid. Anyways. One of the gang members' sister was a... She was getting her, her bus down Tatiana. She was getting busted down by two guys that was doing a come in ride that train, let ride it, choo choo, come in ride that train, let ride it. Yeah, she was getting a, a choo choo on her. And so the boy, one of the boys, was her boyfriend. Mind you not, the boy was her boyfriend. And he invited his friend to bust it down Tatiana on her. They also recorded her. Uploaded to social media and embarrassed the freak out the little girl. So the boy that had sex with the gang member's sister that was her boyfriend at the time, he also looked like Junior. So instead of telling her brother that it was her boyfriend, she blamed it on. I assume Junior, and it's a whole lot. Of, it's a whole lot, a lot of going on with this case because not only after Junior was murdered, they had also they showed where it was about some minor gang members, underage gang members, was on the same block chasing down another kid that allegedly looked like Junior and he came to his, his demise as well. So everybody looked like Junior allegedly because they were trying to get this guy that did the the uploading that looked like Junior. So everybody looked like him. They was going they try to off them off. That's what I'm hearing. That's what that's what was in the news in the media. So anyways, that's the backstory, a little bit of the backstory on how this young promising kid, he had a promising future. He was in the ROTC. He was doing a lot for, you know, not just himself and his family, but for the community. Like I said, he was in ROTC. He was in stuff that had something to do with children around his age in school, in camp. He was going right along with the police officers, you know, because he wanted to have a good future to set himself up for better wealth as long as with his family. So, he was doing all that, trying to make a, a better future for him and his family. And he was like, he was only a kid. He was only 15 years old. So, like I said, the guys thought that um, it was him when they spotted him out, but not knowing that it was not him. They chased him down to a bodega where um, Junior thought it was safe for him to go into the bodega because he normally goes to that bodega 
you know, to shop and whatever. And so he thought it was safe for him to go to the bodega and thought he was going to be safe. So he did get behind the counter. And then when the guy came in behind him, the guy, um, the owner, the store owner was scared because they threatened him. So now they took him out. They roughed him up. They harmed him with a knife. One guy, you know, cut his, you know, you know, I don't want to say it because, you know, it's still sad. It's still to this day. I get emotional behind it because I think about my, my nephews and my nieces, you know, it was a boy, but you know, my son or whatever, this could have been anybody, family member. So it is kind of emotional when you your your kid or your your nephews or whatever your cousins are out and someone looks like them and that could be their last moment walking or whatever because someone looks like them and they're thinking that that's that person <sighs> so the guys was that was carried out this sensitive act on this young man was sentenced to life in prison and I think one of them was sentenced to life without the possibility of parole so let's hear what the news have to say about this case pertaining to Junior so it's always going to be for Junior. gang members accused of ordering the attack on 15 year old Lissandro Junior Guzman have been convicted of murder it is a case that shocked the city and sparked protests CBS 2's Ali Bauman spoke with Junior's mother about today's verdict. Every wall in Leandra Feliz's Bronx apartment has her son Junior's face. Because I feel like I see him everywhere I move. And that's, that's, that's how I feel. Okay. Waiting. Because I have him everywhere. In June of 2018, 15-year-old Lissandro Guzman Feliz, known as Junior, was chased into a Bronx bodega by members of the Trinitarios gang. They dragged him out and stabbed him to death. Friday, a Bronx jury found 33-year-old Diego Suero and 24-year-old Frederick then guilty of second-degree murder. Prosecutors say the two men were now Trinitarios fat. who ordered the attack on Junior. Thank you to all the Judah people because... I know he wasn't chasing nobody with big ass. This is um, the jury protecting the community. The gang had mistaken Junior for a rival when in fact he had no gang ties. Junior was in the NYPD Explorer program and dreamed of becoming a cop. His death sparked massive protests throughout the city demanding justice for Junior. This is justice. Justice. Five gang members are already serving time for their murder convictions. Cases are still pending for six other defendants. I want to thank everybody, all of you. I hope to continue uh, helping me with the next uh, trial is coming up because this is not done yet. Sentencing for Suero and then will be in September. They face 25 years to life in prison outside the Bronx Criminal Court. No, boo, they already got sentenced. Thank you. Let me pause this real quick. Okay, you guys, this also, this right here comes from pettyblog.com. Again, this right here comes from pettyblog.com. So, um, I'm going to let her give you guys some more updates on this is where I first seen this story from. And so, I just went and did my own research and went to the news people. And now, I'm going to some of the, the YouTubers. Because, you know, sometimes they have more information correctly than the news source anyway. So, shout out to PettyBlog.com. Again, shout out to PettyBlog.com. Because every time I find you someone's content, I'm always shouting them out. So, I want to do my due diligence and shout out whoever content that I use. So, right now, I'm using PettyBlog.com for her content. So, thank you. Go ahead to her channel. Subscribe if you want to do so. And tell the House of Queen TV sent you.
Well, he probably thought that they would keep him safe and give him a helping hand, but instead the opposite occurred. The store's owner prevented Junior from hiding behind the counter because he was initially confused as to what was occurring, but after recognizing him and seeing his fear, the store owner relented and allowed him behind the counter, but Junior was still nevertheless spotted by one of the gang members, who then proceeded to drag him outside where three others waited, and that's when they attacked him with the knife, repeatedly, and they had machetes. Junior tried to make it to the hospital that was only down the street, but he collapsed right in front of it, and eventually he didn't make it. Such a sad case. They mistake my son, so now they have to pay for what they did. Eventually, 14 suspects were arrested. So fast forward to October of 2019, five life sentences were handed down to five of the 14. Onaiki Martinez Estrella, 25, who delivered the fatal stab to Junior's neck, was sentenced to life in prison without parole. Prosecutors said that he was not remorseful at all, and in fact, ACO found a one-inch sharp object in his shoe on the way to court. Wow. In court, he told the judge, I'm sorry, and my intention was not to cause death, blaming drugs, alcohol, and his allegiance to the Trinitarios for what he did, but the non-nonsense judge was not buying his act at all. He saw the switch up and even called him out on it. He said, you chased down and slaughtered a 15-year-old defenseless boy. Why? To be a big shot in a gang? It's probably right. another court. Keep in mind that he threw gang signs up in court yeah. and after the verdict shouted out, Popote hasta la muerte, the meaning one? Trinitarios yeah. until death. Mm. And the judge reminded them that they are not real Dominicans. Real Dominicans work hard, seek an education, and obey the law. And he brought that up because one of the Trinitarios stated that he was a real Dominican when he was being arrested. Okay. But yeah, so that day he also sentenced four of the others. And here are their sentences. 25-year-old Antonio Rodriguez Hernandez Santiago, 23-year-old Jose Munez, and 25-year-old Elvin Garcia were all sentenced to 25 years to life, while 19-year-old old Manuel Rivera was sentenced to 23 to life because of his age at the time of the crime. Now, fast forward to last week on July 29, two of the gang leaders who actually gave the go and ordered the hit of the 15-year-old, Diego Suero, 33, and Frederick Den, 24, were found guilty of second-degree murder, and they faced up to 25 years to life behind bars. And if you're wondering what's been taking this so long in particular, it's due to the pandemic that this was so delayed nearly two years. A hearing is scheduled for next month. And there are also seven more who are awaiting to be sentenced in addition to these two. Junior's mother is ecstatic at the justice thus far. Justice for Junior Guzman Feliz. Two more guilty verdicts. A Bronx jury found Diego Suero and Frederick then guilty of this is justice. But what are y'all thinking? We want to know, so leave your thoughts below, and don't forget, the bodega has been shut down. The people in the community refused to let them open, okay? They were not having it, honey. But before they shut down, Junior's mother wanted answers from the owner and manager who were there, and they had the police escort her out. Mind you, for those who thought... Okay, this is where um things get a little tricky, because, okay... Where you stay in an area that's heavily populated by gang members. And most of the times the gang members would threaten you and your family. So by being in New York, where there's a lot of different gangs and there's like a lot of heavy gangs, also like in L.A. and other parts of the world. But like I'm saying, when you stay in a part of a city or town or whatever that is heavily populated with gang members, like I said, they be mostly around the store areas or just hanging out at parks or whatever. So... In this particular area that, you know, the bodegas are really popular, popular in New York. So, you have a group of people come to the stores. They steal whatever. Then you like, hey, what, pay for that, whatever. And then they threaten you. And not only do they threaten you, they threaten your family. So, they feel like, or then they hit you up for money. Like, you owe them. Like, you can't work. You can't have your store open let you pay us to, um... Like they, I like to call them long sharks. I guess is what you look for. They're extorting you for um, for money, whatever. So, the in a situation with the store, he did know Junior, okay, but on the same token, he was also threatened as well. So, how would we feel? If we was on that side of the specter, as in we're trying to save Junior, and then also they know that he came into the story. He couldn't, I mean, 
he they was like right on his tail so he he didn't go around the corner or he didn't hide behind a car so they had they knew he went to the store so they're gonna like tear the store up looking for him and you know that's gonna cost the store owner so how would we go by if we were in a situation protect junior get our store tore up or possibly get harm as well so he's on a lose lose situation that's my opinion in my opinion only i'm trying to help this kid that i know that always come in the store and then they know that i'll help him i'm also um my life is in danger as well as my family so i don't know what to properly say in a situation of this bodega store owner because he did help junior he did help him also when they found that he was if y'all go back and watch the video, if they're still out, he kept picking his head um, around the, the um, around the um, counter. So that's how they spotted him, and that's how they pulled him out because the store owner did allow Junior to come and hide in his store. But he kept he was so nervous he kept on picking his head out around the counter, and because one of the guys did go around to to the counter and they didn't see him. And they're like, where he's at, where he's at. But then he, one of the guys spotted his top of his head and his hair. And that's when they grabbed him. So the, the store owner did do his diligence as in protecting him. But he was so nervous and scared, he kept peeking his head out. And that's how they grabbed him. And so if the, if the um, store owner, if, the, if he kept peeking his head off and under the counter, they would never see him. But then the store owner probably, they probably would have like tried to beat the store owner up or whatever, destroy his store. We don't know because we was not there. We don't know how, how the gang members had terrorized the store owner. But they want to say that the store owner did not protect Junior like they that he should have. What could he have did in this incident when he know that these gang members are very very violent they will off anybody that step in their way that junior was a random kid to them nope according to his mom they knew junior they knew him since he was a kid they know his whole family and this is the very bodega that they frequent i don't know why you don't hurt my son if you know him he know him he know me look like he showed what he was hiding <laughs> Look, it's one thing to be scared and want to protect your own safety, but they didn't even call for help of a kid they knew personally and saw oozing of blood, nor did they let him back in when he tried to get back inside. Mm-mm, shame. But let me say this. The owner explained that the reason why he did not help nor intervene is because these five guys warned him not to get involved or else. Now, speaking of the five guys, the New York Post has finally reported on the arrest. They claim that five of them were caught, two in New York and three in Patterson, New Jersey. They haven't provided arrest videos or mugshots yet, though. Hold up. After making this video, they finally provided arrest videos, so let me quickly include some of them in here. But they've yet to mention anything about the mother who turned her son over in DR, but it really happened and is 100% true and has been reported in DR. Inmediatamente supimos que él tomó ese vuelo, eh, llamamos a la, a la jurisdicción de, de Estados Unidos, a los, los oficiales de Estados Unidos que llevan el caso para que sea apresado inmediatamente pise tierra de Estados Unidos y, y así fue. Nosotros eh, nos llegó la información de que él había tomado el vuelo y solamente tuvimos que, que informar allá, porque sabe que eso es un caso que no es jurisdicción nuestra, que nosotros no teníamos ninguna incidencia con relación a ese caso. And mind you, in fact, allegedly, two of them fled to DR. Keep in mind that there was more than five involved. The news hasn't even mentioned it, which from the other footage you see that it was at least ten. So if they caught five in the States and there's two in DR, their numbers don't match. But all in all, just because the news doesn't report on something doesn't mean it's not true. 
And for those who say, if so-and-so doesn't say, I don't believe it, that's bogus. But anyway, the leader of the Dominican gang has apologized to Junior's family and said they are basically letting go of the men involved for killing the wrong person. Shaking my head. And here's more details on that. Apparently, the video of the sister is supposed to last. Then last week, another teen who was 14 who survived and who was supposedly related to one of the grown men who attacked Junior was attacked exactly how Junior was attacked with the machetes and knives by a group of young teens. And it was also caught on camera. However, one of the Dominican kids running away from the scene was also similar to Junior. So they supposedly thought it was retaliation for the threats from the same kid who posted the sister video. But it wasn't Junior either. Matter of fact, the three of them all looked different. The boy was shorter and his hair was longer. And because he also had a blue coat, they assumed that it was Junior. Shaking my head. So we just want to pretend like every person who looks similar and has similar garments are the same person? As if they custom that coat for one person? Right. Okay, you guys, so I'm going to stop it right there. So, again, uh, this um, information is public knowledge. So, if you guys want to get more information about this situation, go ahead and go and search up. You can Google um, the update on Junior so we continue with saying justice for junior so um i appreciate everybody that came and viewed my content also shout out to um pettyblog.com again shout out to pettyblog.com so if you guys enjoyed the content go ahead and subscribe to the channel hit notification bell button hit all so every time i, I upload you guys will be notified also thumb up the content so it can push me to the algorithm leave a comment in the comment section so i know what you guys thought about this video and again thank you all for subscribing to my channel also i have a second youtube channel it's called country girl candles again it's called country girl candles if you guys want to subscribe to my second youtube channel it's called country girl candles what's everything about candles for my small business you guys want to support so I appreciate everybody. Again, this is your girl, Queen 31A, Ramage Kennedy, Diva, House of Queens TV, and I'll catch you guys on another one. Bye. Keep it in mind. It'll get great later.